Excellent. Yeah. Morning, Chair. Yeah. <laughs> so, I uh, should do a little prayer. Is that okay? Yeah. For a start, yeah? Yeah. So, just bow our heads in prayer. But Father God, we just, we just thank you that we can come together right now as a family to worship and praise you. And Lord, thank you for this building because I've never seen a church that worships like this one. Oh. Really set, set on fire by the Spirit, Lord. And um, really feel refreshed right now, full of your fire. So, Lord, anoint us all afresh right now. Give us ears to hear. Lord, if there's anything that you want to point out to someone today, just, just do that by your spirit, Lord. So we worship and praise you and we give you the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So thank you everyone for coming today. And uh, I've been a bit nervous about doing this, but God's going to carry me through. Um, and it's going to read a scripture. It says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and the female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit. Um, the reason I read that is because I'm going to cover a prophecy that was given to Emir, a very good friend of mine. And uh, he doesn't get many prophecies, but when he does, they do tend to come true. And he had tears rolling down his face. Uh, what the prophecy was, was a team of evangelists coming out of Pembrokeshire, uh, uh, numbers of them. And the movement from Pembrokeshire, and there would be a wave of fire going all the way through Wales. Many people giving their lives to the Lord. Uh, one of them has been James. Uh, well, this is what we think at the moment. We see James out on the street, myself out on the street, friend Karis, Peter, John Bell, even Emmy has been out on the street with us. Even John carrying his cross and with members of the church. So we do see a movement of evangelists in this area. Uh, recently, I got a vision from the Lord, and uh, it was of uh, Moncton being covered with a belt. To me, it signified that was an area we'd probably put to target. And uh, yeah, so we've been targeting that area. We've seen many people give their lives to the Lord. We've been preaching the word constantly. You know, we've been doing drive by, we call it drive by evangelism, driving the car, winding the window down, giving tracts and telling them about Jesus. And many people have uh, been shocked at the healings we've been seeing, you know, because, you know, um, he said, if you don't believe me for, uh, for what I say to you, believe me for my works. So many people need a sign, they need a wonder, they need a miracle. So yeah, the miracles we've seen recently have been quite astonishing, haven't they, James? Yes, absolutely astonishing. Um, when, I, when I first became a Christian, I didn't, I didn't see that many miracles. But I met a woman called Ben Edwards. She's a miracle. Woman. Yeah, it's a really, really godly woman. Um, one miracle that I can tell about is my, my personal one with my wife. So my wife had endometriosis cysts on her ovaries she, she'd be in the shower and she'd be crying like bent over it was really horrible and uh, she was going to have surgery in Langwilly and um, it got postponed and um, we went to Lynn Edwards one night and uh, she wanted to pray for us so she anointed Chloe with oil on the head and in two weeks the cysts had disappeared endometriosis disappeared and now we have uh, one month, uh, a one year old baby on the 21st of July so she'll be one on the 21st of July so glory to God so some of the recent ones we've seen, uh, a man called Wayne, and uh, uh, we came back from Nigel Lewis's conference um, in the Foundry House, and uh, we was, uh, Paul was going to drop me home, and uh, he didn't drop me up right by my house, for some reason he just he went all the way up the road, and uh, we saw loads of people outside the house, and I knew some of them, so we went over and started talking to him about Jesus, like, do, you, do you believe in God and everything? It's like, oh, no, uh, you know, I believe some of the Bible, but I don't believe some of all the stories in the Bible. And uh, uh, we found out that Wayne, the boy, he had a really bad knee. He couldn't do motocross anymore. And uh, he, he was injured in a football match. And um, me and Paul prayed for him. And the next day, he, he said, oh, he came up in the spot and he was like, I can jump. I can, I can do this. I can do this. And he was like, uh, you prayed for me. And in the night, my knee was burning. And the next day, it's, it's a miracle, honestly. Praise God for his, his, the miracles he does every single day. Um, uh, my next door neighbour, Charlotte, um, we, we drove past her in a van. Right, yeah. And uh, we pulled up to the side of anything we can pray for. And she said, you know, my, my back's my back's here. Paul prayed for it. And uh, she came over mine about a week later. And she said, you know the prayer you did for me the other day? Yeah, it actually worked, you know? And, and then, can, can you pray for my kid? And I said, yeah, yeah, we can pray for him. Yeah, he had a cast on. I prayed for his rest. And he was like, he was, he's only a young boy. And he was like, oh my gosh, that actually worked. He said, do you have Jesus' number? <laughs> I was like, just, uh, yeah. My mum, my not so long ago as well, uh, Paul prayed for him. She had gallstones. And uh, she went to the doctors and they said, it's, it's all disappeared. It's just like food remains now. So praise God. Praise God. All the glory to him. Paul's been in work. 
and he's seen four legs healed. Do you want to elaborate yeah, on that? Yeah, four legs healed. In a, I think there's about ten people at work, and uh, over a period of time, I've been preaching the gospel to them, and I can feel really the spirit moving in that place. But I've been praying for people and seeing people get healed. So they can't really deny that there's a God now because four people have been healed. They're talking amongst themselves. I'm putting gospel tracks into the toilets, up on the mirrors and stuff like that. And they build people's vans and things, and the lunchtime chatting to people. So we're seeing power of God move really powerfully around this area now, and I believe it's going to get even stronger over the next few months and years, 100%. The woman in the scooter? Yeah, the woman in the scooter, it was one woman, she fell over on the scooter and grazed all her, her, her neck, and she was in a bit of a state. She was walking like she had a wooden leg, so we prayed for her. Saw her the next day, and she thought, it's a lot better. Well, I said, well, God doesn't like doing half a job, so let's pray till everything's gone. So we prayed, and she was able to walk away absolutely pain-free. Glory to God, you know. But it's not me; it's the name of Jesus Christ. So I've even had my children before praying in the name of Jesus Christ and prayed for a Rastafarian guy whose wrist got healed, his knee got healed. They've also prayed for people, and depression's gone, anxiety is gone, you know. And this is a really powerful testimony of what God can do. And when we actually reach out and do this to people and have faith in the name of Jesus Christ, it brings glory back to God, you know. So what I'm saying, you guys, is if you get the opportunity, use that name of Jesus. Say it with faith. You've got nothing to lose. All of a sudden, no, no carefree attitude. Say, in the name of Jesus, be healed and expect it. And you'll see those miracles. Sometimes I like it to a muscle, if you like. You know, the more you do it, the more you expect, the more your faith increases. When I first start praying for people, I wouldn't really think you see too much. And as I start praying more and more and more, I'll see more and more and more. Because my level of expectancy sort of rises, you know. But that's all glory to God, because he's, he wills us to do his good pleasure, you know, all glory goes to him. Um, well, so got this, so yeah, then another guy called Rob, another amazing testimony. Uh, I went to pick up a fire stick off this guy, and uh, I didn't realise he had suicidal thoughts, I didn't realise he had a bad pancreas, I didn't realise he had slight brain damage, I didn't realise um, he had all these issues in his body, and he had a life-threatening disease, which his family were really concerned about, so I said I get a bit of prayer to him, prayer to his brother and a few weeks later I had a message off him Paul I need to get hold of you I need to get hold of you I've been to see the doctor today my pancreas has been healed wow. he said I said I was going to kill myself this, this is, I was going to kill myself with a, a dog collar you know? and God stepped in the heel and all the suicidal thoughts just disappeared this is why it's so powerful just to get that word of God to them because God can set you free salvation isn't alone in, you know, yes we're saved and we spend eternity with Jesus but we can be healed delivered of all our pains all our suffering if we have faith in the Lord God, because he is the God of the impossible. So praise God. And uh, yeah, so we see amazing things. And, uh, you know, we're, we're here today to tell you that, you know, you're filled with the same spirit of God, the same anointing that we've got, you've got, you know, and if you step out in faith, another story, I was in a uh, supermarket the other day, and I saw this guy, massive scaffolder, who I was always really fearful of. Every time I had lunch break, I'd avoid him because he was so brash, he was so loud. At the time, actually, I was really shy, really shy of his. But I believe one of my testimonies is God's given me this, this power to actually speak the gospel, not my power for great. It was he that lives within me and he that lives in the world. And I saw him in the supermarket and I saw a little window of opportunity. He was on his leg, he had a cross and he had a tattoo of Jesus. So I said to him, uh, I said, I didn't realise you were a believer, Carl. At that point, you know, I was locked in, you know, I couldn't get out of it. I had to speak to him, I had to engage, you know. But the Holy Spirit took over. I preached to him, gave him, gave him a leaflet and talked about Jesus Christ. And, uh, and he sort of backed down, it's like God just took away all his armour, and he just sat down, you know, he was like, you know, looking at me, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll look at it, I'll read it, you know, so that's the to God, so great, it was he that lived in me, not me, but the strength of the Holy Spirit, and someone that came out of extreme social phobia, so he used to medicate myself for that, to be able to do that in a situation, that could only be God, you know, so glory to God. Um, what about the, the rich man in the half of the rest? The rich man's that? The rich guy you didn't want to speak to, and the Lord was like, oh, go on. you've met him on the corner. It's in a Lambo. In a Lambo. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Lord showed me to speak to this guy. His name was, um, well, I won't mention his name because that's such wrong. And uh, the Holy Spirit was saying, you need to speak to this guy. You need to speak to this guy. So, not to get assignments from God, and there really people I don't, it was way out of my comfort zone, what would have been years ago. And I said, well, God, you're going to have to give me a better sign than that. If this is the guy you want me to speak to, you're going to have to give me a sign now. So I went back there and about there he was in his Lamborghini right opposite me. And I thought that would do. So I went to his house a few weeks later. Well, a few months later, I was a bit lazy actually going to see him. I gave him a gospel track and I just said, you know, I said, God has told me to speak to you. He's told me I need to come to see you and tell you about Jesus. I said, do you know Jesus? And he said, no, not really. 
I mean, he was cooking dinner at the time, so it was awkward. I couldn't stay there for too long. So I gave him a track and said, please, please read this. You know, I was pleased. You know, it's important. Gave that to him, he closed his door. So, yeah, I think God's moving really powerfully in this area. And I believe that prophecy is coming to true into fruition now in front of our eyes. You know, we see it, you know. And uh, what do you want to next? Healing's on method. Well, we can go to that and yeah. do some readings. Do readings. Yeah, go on that. So it's a bit disorganised. I spoke to James yesterday and we were trying to put everything together in a way that would work. Oh, okay. You know? I'm just going to do a reading from uh, Mark chapter 15 to 20, is it? Yes. Okay. And go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptised shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. <laughs> so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he, received up, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord was working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So, in Moncton, we're seeing... Uh, Outbreak. We're seeing we're seeing uh, a lot of outreach. People come into faith. Um, a lot of open people. You find that like in council estates, and people are broken. They're, they they tried everything. They tried the drugs. They tried the women. They tried the partying, and it just doesn't fill their soul. They're looking for something. And when when we went, so it, it's crazy because the people you think that wouldn't want listen, that would be like go away. You know, the, the tatted up guys, the big guys. They're the ones that usually want to know about Jesus. You know, and it's the ones you think would want to know it, don't. It's, uh, we should never judge someone on what they look like. Um, but, um, yeah, it's been amazing. And I, I want to give you a little demonstration on how you can share your faith. You might not, you might, it's, not, it's not to condemn anyone here if you don't share your faith. It's just to equip you, <clears throat> give you something to think about, see what the Lord lays on your heart. Um, but Ray Comfort, does anyone know Ray Comfort here? Living Waters? Yeah, so he, he's got an evangelism style, and it's it's basically you point out someone's sin, you show them that they're a sinner. So you show them, you show them that they have something wrong with them, and then you show them the cure, which is Jesus, what he did for them on the cross. So me and Paul are going to do a little demonstration. Do you want to add anything to that? <coughs> yeah, that's fine. I just um, uh, I just want to read a verse and read. Okay, I'm going to read from Romans 10, 14. And it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that bring that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Mm, mm, you know? mm. And I, I, just to add one more thing, there was a, uh, recently we've had a few people that have given their lives to the Lord in Nayland. People I could have spoken to like two years ago, and I never thought for, for a second they would give their lives to the Lord. But something must have resonated with them when they heard the gospel, convicted the conviction of their sins and the fact that they would spend eternity in separation or with eternal life with Jesus Christ. And it was beautiful. Yeah, one of the boys, Lowen, about two years ago, I saw him in the park and prayed for him, and preached the gospel, and uh, God healed his back. And uh, he um, saw him six months later after his back was healed, and he came up to me and he says, oh, he says, mate, he said, I've given my life to the Lord. Since I saw you, I've given my life to my Lord. But oh, not only that, but I've prayed for my wife, and she's been healed. And I said, that's amazing. And even better than that, I said to him, you're like a disciple now, Lowen. He got in touch with me and said he's been preaching to all his friends. Two of them turned up the other day, gave their life to the Lord properly. And I said, look, this is serious. You know, when you give your life to the Lord, it's really important. And then another guy turned up, prayed for him. His knee got healed. He's given his life to the Lord. On top of that, because they're quite influential people in Nayland, and they're all friends in that community. They, they invite me down again another night and said, we've got other people that want to know about God. And they were very rude, you know, they didn't bother me though, you know. So as, I, as I said to them, I said, if you don't know God, that's, that's not my lookout. I'm here to tell you the good news, whether you accept it or not, is up to you. Because God's not going to get in your headlock and say, you have to come to me, you know, he's a gentleman. You, understand? Yeah. you know, 
Yeah. But anyway, as we were walking up, after I, I did so much serious flack, so many serious good questions they were, they were posing to me, you know, some of them I couldn't even answer. I walked back up and I just changed tack and I said to him, how are you doing? Um, how's your job going? What are you up to? You know, he's only about 18. You know, he showed him interest in him, showed him some love. And I said, look, I've got Bibles there. You're going to have to have one. But we've got some if he wants them. He's gone out of the Bible. So I gave him a Bible. He said, I'll definitely read this. I gave him a book on Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ, so he could learn about God. And uh, yeah, I, don't, I think just to get that gospel message to people is so integral because some, how many people are dying? You know, every year, it's a hundred and fifty thousand people die every day. So, it's um, a lot of people, you know, and uh, we don't know when even our family members or friends or the people we meet on a daily basis could be the last time we see them, you know, and um, yeah, it's scary. And um, you know, we make provisions in life, you know, our retirement, our, our homes, what we're going to save up for our grandchildren. But a lot of people don't consider death. They don't take death into consideration. What's going to happen when you die? Because you will go somewhere. And uh, we just, we, we go on with daily life, you know? We don't we don't look to the eternal things. Um, we don't really consider death. We, we try to, we, we kind of sh- shrug it away, you know? But it's, it's inevitable. It will happen. Um, should we do the demonstration then? Yes, the demonstration. Yeah? Yeah. 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 So, does anyone know what one of these are called? <laughs> yeah. So I've got this. This is a gospel tract, um, and really, it's it's a good icebreaker if you want a conversation with someone. Sometimes it's hard to just go. All right, do, do, do you want to know about Jesus? No, you don't. No. I, the way the way I do it is, you know, hey, did you get one of these? No, I didn't. What's that? Oh, that's a that's a Christian gospel tract. Yeah. Um, do, do you believe in God's existence? Not really, um, I don't really think about it once. No, do you, do you think, if, if you were to die and you met God, do you think you're a good enough person to go to heaven? Yeah, I had a lady across the road the other day. And, yeah? Yeah, and I had a mum put the shot in it. Oh, so you, yeah. you do good things then? Oh yeah, lots of good things, yeah. Oh, okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna see if you're a good person. We're gonna, we're gonna test it by God's moral law. Moral law. It's called the Ten Commandments, okay? Is that okay? Yeah, so, what's your name? My name's Paul. Okay, Paul. Um, have you ever told a lie before? Uh, yeah, white lies, but yeah, one or two, yeah, yeah. Okay, white lies, yeah, yeah. What do you call someone that lies? Um, a liar. A liar. Okay, have you ever stolen anything, even if it's small? Uh, in the past, yeah, I've stolen stuff. Yeah, what yeah. what do you call someone that steals things? I'm a thief. Yeah. All right, have you ever banged your toe and used God's name as a cuss word? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, So, So it was really serious in the Old Testament, it was punishable by death. Okay. So, so Paul, I'm not judging you, but by your own admission, you said you're a lion, thief, and blasphemous person at heart. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments, will you be innocent or guilty? Guilty, I guess. Guilty, heaven or hell? I never thought about that, yeah, but I guess it's, it's hell. Yeah, that, that terrifies me. Like, I love you as a person. Even though I've just met you, I love you as a person. I don't want you to go to hell. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so they wouldn't have to go to hell? I have no idea. What did well, well 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, who is God, became a man. He lived the life that me and you couldn't live. He overcame the trials and the temptations that we fail on a daily basis. But Jesus took your punishment on the cross. He took it away. Just before he died, he said, it is finished. Someone dying would not, why would they say it is finished? The debt for mankind has been paid for. So when you stand before God and all these crimes are brought against you, you'll be forgiven because of what Jesus has done on the cross. He paid your crime. Now, if you're in a court of law, Paul, and the judge says, look, there is a stack of speed and fines here, Paul. You are guilty, but someone stepped in and paid your fine. That's what Jesus did for you. He stepped in on the cross, paid your fine, suffered the death that you deserve in hell. So you could be forgiven and spend eternity with God. And then once you, once you accept Jesus as your Savior and your debt is clear, God will say, you need to repent now. Turn away from the life you were living before. Turn away from your sinful actions and ask God for the Holy Spirit who will help you live the Christian life that me and you can't live on our own. You know, Jesus died. He was buried. He rose again the third day, defeat and death. And when you put your trust and faith in him, he'll forgive you of everything you've ever done. Does that make sense? Yeah, that kind of makes sense. It was to do with faith. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so someone can someone can butt in and say, "What about evolution? What about the Big Bang theory?" But the thing is, you've got to stick to the gospel message. Get the gospel to them first, and then God can use that. You know, it's not like because because you'll just go on an endless spiral of different conversations, debates about evolution and multi universes and everything. But you've got to stick to the gospel message. Always bring it back to the gospel and show that person they're a sinner and Jesus is the cure. Or if 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 that's too much to take in, you can you can rewatch rewatch videos of Ray Comfort, or give your own testimony. Just say, hey, listen, you know, 
uh, give them a tract. If they say, oh, oh what's that? Oh, it's a Christian. I'm, I'm a Christian. You know, God's done so much in my life. He's, he's given me a real peace that I've never felt before. All the things that I were trying before just it didn't add up. So there's different ways you can do it, but that's just a little thing to give you some, some encouragement. Yeah, so, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we just want to encourage anyone here today that feels that they want to share their faith more, you know, that we are here. You know, not we're saying we're specialists, we're not, there's only one that's special as Jesus, but we're willing to work with you and take you on the street. To, to you praying, we'll make it easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll make it as easy as, easy as you, you like. You know, some people might want to speak, but they might not want to observe. And then the Holy Spirit might give you a lead in, and suddenly you're speaking. You know, so we'll make it as easy as you can, as we can for you. Um, yeah. So sometimes as well, you can you can cast your pills before swine. So, so someone could be just trying to look for an argument, and you usually find that with people. Um, so what I boil it down to, I say, well, if God was real, would you worship Him as God? Would you Would you want to know Him if He was real? And if they say no, I know where their heart is. It's a sin problem, not a belief problem. It's a problem with their son. There's a heart problem there. The fact that they love their sin more than they want to know God. And that really, that takes a divine encounter to change that person. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so the problem is they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So they're still living in their sins. They still want to stay alive in their sins. They don't want to be alive in Christ. Yeah. We've, we felt, we've seen people. We've, we've, we've laid hands on them and prayed with them. They felt the presence of God. They've been healed, but they still don't want to know God. They, they want everything God gives, but they don't want to follow God and turn away from what they're doing. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I think we've covered everything we need to speak about today. You know, but I just want to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak in here today. Yeah, it's been yeah. amazing. Glory. Yeah. Praise God. Will you take some questions? Is that all right? Yes, I'm just going to put them on the spot now to ask some questions. Now, obviously, this evangelism. Is uh, you know, there's lots of different types of and lots of different other things you can do as well. But this one, uh, I agree, it's direct, isn't it? You get them right to the juggler, and it might not be for everybody's kind of style, but sometimes we just need a, to get going, <laughs> don't we? Because we just, you know, as you said, there's an urgency, isn't it? Now I'm doing the preach, who's trying to preach after the preach, I'm not going to do the preach after the preach, <laughs> they're just preach. Anyway, but I want to know, is there a script? Do you, is there a script in, in that tract? Was that to do with what you were saying when, is that like uh, Ray Comfort? So, is that I, I didn't, th- these are different ones. I got given these by a brother who goes on and does apologetics, but it's, it's, yeah. it's talking about your sin, right. and we face eternal punishment, abandoned self-effort because we can't do it ourselves. Right. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention as well, you can add, in the, in the courtroom case, you, the, the person could say, well, oh, what about this religion, what about that religion? You could just say, well, try that in a court of law. You can just say to the judge, hey judge, you know, I did good things on the weekend, um, you know, I, I, uh, I work for the street pastors, I do stuff for, for charity, you know, you should just let me in, isn't it? But God's not going to let sin slide, he is a righteous and just judge, so he's not going to let something slide. So a fine had to be paid, and Jesus paid that fine. You know, all of the religions teach you can do it yourself. Try that in our court system, it's not going to work in God's, you know? Mm, brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... Is there a script where this is written down that we can learn to get it? Yeah, sort yeah, of thing, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've got tracks. I think you've got one in your car, haven't you? Okay. Okay, we've, got, we've got tracks, but also we've got, um, uh, I think on, on YouTube, uh, Ray Comfort gives the best example of right, evangelism, and we basically follow that because it's worked so well, it's so effective, because it convict, convicts people of their sins and the acknowledgement of the fact they've got sins and they need a saviour. Yeah, they can be doing it for a long while. So. Yeah, we can definitely write down who that is. So if one of you feels you want to look at that, his name's Ray Comfort. So, yeah.